As always, we're going to start out by rolling our cake dough into a ball. Once you have your ball, go ahead and use the palm of your hand to smash the ball down and then use your fingers to smash the tops down to make it look like an oval. Take some extra cake dough to form his mouth. It's going to look like an almond sliver. Make sure that it fits on his face, leaving room on the sides for us to draw on his mouth. Once you have the right size, use a cake pop stick to create an indention for where our nose is going to go. So now our almond flipper looks like a pair of lips. Go ahead and make sure there's still room around the outside for you to paint the mouth on. Now it's time for us to go ahead and attach the stick to the cake ball. Put some chocolate on the end of your stick and insert it. Push until you feel pressure against your finger. That means you need to stop. Use a toothpick to smooth out your chocolate. And then get a little bit more chocolate on your toothpick and apply it to the front of your cake pop where we are going to attach his mouth. Use a toothpick to smooth the chocolate around the outside. Place your cake pop to the side and allow it to dry for two minutes before dipping. Dip your cake pop straight down, and when you lift up, gently knock off any extra chocolate off the top of his head. Take a scribe or a toothpick and pop any visible bubbles. Now while our cake pop is drying, we're going to go ahead and make his fondant accent pieces. We'll start out by making his teeth. Use a pin blade or a sharp knife to cut a thin piece of fondant into a rectangle shape. Round out the edges a little bit with your fingers so that they're not so sharp. And then we'll just place it to the side to dry. Next, we're going to do his nose made out of orange fondant. We're just going to make a little cone shape using our fingers. And we want the bottom to be nice and flat. We'll be using brown fondant to make his little feet. They're just two small balls. Just make sure that they are the same size. And then lastly, we'll do his hair. Now there's only gonna be three pieces of hair, but as you'll see, I'm going to do four pieces just because it's always nice to have an extra piece just in case something happens just in case it breaks or falls off. It's always nice to have one extra piece so you don't have to go back and redo this. So roll out your fondant pretty thin and make sure it has a nice point on the end. Now it's time for painting and we'll be using poppy paint in black and gray. We'll start out by painting his eyes and they're each going to be a round circle on either side of his nose. Once you're done painting his eyes, then we can go ahead and continue to use the black for his eyebrows. I'm going to place a dot in the middle of his forehead on each side, and then I'm gonna to try to line up a dot a little bit lower 
lining up with the outside of his eye on either side. Then I'm just going to draw a line from the inner dot to the outer dot. Now his eyebrows end up being a little bit too close together for my liking. So later on in the video, I'll show you guys how to erase poppy paint and fix mistakes. With gray poppy paint, I'm going to draw a curve at the top corner of each side of his mouth. And then I'll draw a line connecting the two curves to each other, creating a really cute grin for his mouth. Go ahead and give your mouth a second coat of paint. Now we're ready to attach some fondant pieces and we'll start out with his nose. I'm going to try to get it to fit in there and if it doesn't fit, which it most likely won't, we're going to just cut it down at an angle with a pin blade or a sharp knife. The angle really helps attach it. Then we'll go ahead and attach his teeth with a little chocolate. And we'll do the same with his feet. While our hair is still drying, we're going to go ahead and erase the inside of his eyebrows. Like I told you earlier, they end up being a little bit too close together. So I'm just taking a little Everclear on a Q-tip and gently rubbing the puppy paint off. And then using the dry side of the Q-tip to dry the cake pop. I'm going to go back in and just touch up the edges to make sure it's nice and smooth. Now we can go ahead and very carefully attach our hairs one by one using a drop of chocolate for each. Once your hairs are dry, you are all done making your Olaf Zoom Zoom cake pop.